Welcome to Scam Baiting Emails. You might recall that a while ago, a scammer who emailed me turned out to be someone I used to know. In fact, we were quite good friends until I accidentally slept with his wife a couple of times. And now, a couple of years later, I receive another scam email from a different guy I actually used to be friends with. It's been a long time since I've heard from him, and at first I was delighted to see that apparently he actually had followed through on his childhood dream of becoming, well, let's start with the first email he sent me. At first it appears to be your run-of-the-mill advance fee scheme. Little do I know the surprise that awaits me. That first email bears the subject line, Final Award-Winning Notification. Greetings to you. This is to bring to your notice that because of the impossibility of your fund transfer through our bank network, we have credited your total fund of, okay, let's see, the first comma would indicate thousands and the second would be millions, so they have credited my total fund $12 billion legitimate U.S. dollars into an international draft, and we have paid the delivery fee of your ATM Visa card to you. We paid it because your ATM Visa card worth of $12 billion, which we have registered for deliver, has less than 16 days to expire in the custody of the EMS company, and when it expires, the money will go into federal government treasury account. For that, we decided to help you pay off the money so that your ATM card will not expire because we trust that when you receive this, your ATM card, definitely you must pay us back and even compensate us for helping you. Like we stated earlier, the delivery charges has been paid. Therefore, the only money you were advised to send to them is their official security keeping fees of $25 US dollars every day. Like I stated earlier, the crediting, reactivation, delivery, and the company registration charges has been paid by me, but I did not pay their official security keeping fees since they refused. They refused, and the reason is that they do not know when you are going to contact them, and the demurrage might have increased by then. Demurrage, a charge payable to the owner of a chartered ship in respect of failure to load or discharge the ship within the time agreed. They told me that their official security keeping fees is $25 per a day, and I deposited it yesterday. Therefore, you should contact them with the below contact information. Company name, EMS Express Company Service. Email, and they give me an email address. Logistic manager, Mr. Rev. Timothy Johnson. Telephone number, and they give me a telephone number. Try to contact them today and also send them the security official security keeping charge to avoid increasing of their fees and let me know once you receive this your international bank draft. Contact them today with your full information requested below. And they ask for a bunch of personal information which really is none of their business. Try to indicate all this codes to them because it will prove that you are the rightful person that own the ATM card in their custody. And then they give me a list of impressive-looking but incomprehensible codes. A shipment code, an ATM card registered code, security code, transaction code, and a certificate deposit code. This is to avoid wrong delivery. Do that urgent to avoid increase of their keeping fees and let us know once you receive your ATM Visa card. Now, here comes the part that simply blew my mind. Yours sincerely, Mr. Rev. Timothy Johnson. I know him. We used to be really good buddies, almost like brothers. I don't waste any time replying to my old buddy, Timothy Johnson. Hey, Timbo, great to hear from you. Sounds as though you finally made good on your childhood dream of becoming a minister or a rabbi or a priest or something like that. Congrats, man. I'm still working at the same old distillery, but I've been promoted to the Alcubierre Drive's quality control department. As I recall, when I got the promotion, my boss said, we figure we might as well make use of your anal retentive tendencies. I don't know if he was being humorous or if he was just making a joke. We really should catch up with what's been going on in each other's lives sometime. But first, please elucide me about what this whole $12 billion legitimate U.S. dollars is about. I don't want to seem obtuse or acute, but I don't understand what the deal is. Are you asking me to open a new account in your bank network? If so, how come? Does it cost me anything to open the account? 
Do you receive some sort of commission on every new account you bring in? I really don't understand all that financial jargon. I'm sure you use those terms every day in your new line of work, but you're employing a lexicon I've never heard of. I'm sure whatever new devious plan you've concocted is a good one that I'll want to participate in once I understand it. Please explain it to me in non-technical terms, if you don't mind. Pals, Rob, or as my friends like you call me, Rob McClen. He replies, resend me your full information. Timmy. Huh? There seems to be some confusion here or there. If you take another look at my previous email that I sent you just a few minutes earlier, you'll see that I asked a couple of specific questions and also asked you to explain what this is all about. I really would need to understand what it is we're doing before I start filling in information forms, don't you think? Take another look at my earlier email from before and you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? I really do want to know what this is all about. Hey Tim, I've been waiting for you to reply to the email I sent you on September 9, almost a month ago. In that email, I asked you just a few really easy questions to help me understand what's going on. For your convenience, I'll reprint them here. Are you asking me to open a new account in your bank network? If so, how come? Does it cost me anything to open the account? Do you receive some sort of commission on every new account you bring in? Come on, man. I mean, it's great that you found God. You're a rev now, right? But I hope that doesn't mean you're turning your back on your old, really old friends. I mean, after all, this all began with your emailing me. So I don't think I'm falling out of line by asking you to explain this whole thing to me. P.S. Do you wear one of those black robes every day? P.P.S. I assume you still have the biggest appetite of anyone I know, do you ever get real hungry in the middle of the night and slip into the holy kitchen or something like that, I'm not sure I'm correctly remembering what they call it, and grab a handful of those wafers to take back to your room? Hey, Timster, what's going on? I was so delighted to hear from you after all these years and replied to your September 9 email as soon as I saw it to express my pleasure at your getting in touch with me and also to ask a couple of questions to help me understand what this fund of $12 billion legitimate U.S. dollars is all about. Then I wrote to you a second time on September 9 and then again on October 2, but haven't heard anything back from you. Did you receive those emails? I must say I now have mixed emotions at hearing from you. I was so excited to hear from an old friend, you, but waiting for you to reply to my emails is like throwing the tumbling dice and just hoping they'd come up lucky seven. As much as I would like to resume our friendship and also to understand the $12 billion legitimate U.S. dollar thing, this will be the last time I try to motivate a reply from you. It's not a very pleasant feeling hearing nothing back from you except the sound of silence. After all, apparently you're now a rev, but I'm sure you're not also one of those monks who have to take vows of silence and then not talk to people, right? So I really would appreciate it if you would write back to me so we can correspond and you can help me understand what the $12 billion legitimate U.S. dollar fund thing is all about. P.S. Angie says hello. I was waiting for you to pay the fee. Hey, Timber, but before I can pay the fee, I need to understand what this is all about. I mean, if someone said to you, pay this fee even though you don't understand what it is for, would you just blindly send the money without understanding what's going on? Of course not. Well, if you wouldn't pay a fee that you didn't understand, that's the way I feel about it, too. As the French say, only a fool steps into the bathtub without first testing the water. Probably it sounds better in French, but as you know, all I speak is English. I'm not going to keep asking you to elucide what the fee is for. I have made an honest effort to reestablish our relationship, but I'm not going to beg. If you want my help with whatever this is all about, stop being so mysterious and help me understand what's going on. I had hoped that your becoming a rev would make you more open and forthright, as I'm sure God wants you to be. But if you choose to be so secretive that you won't even tell me what this is all about, then the hell with you. And sadly, thus ends my all-too-brief reunion with a childhood friend. 
If you haven't seen my much more extensive and deeply personal correspondence with a different old friend, I'll link to that video too in this video's description below. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel so you'll know whenever I've added a new scam baiting email video. If you'll be kind enough to share your comments, suggestions, requests, and reactions to this video in the comments section below, I promise to make sure Rob sees it. It's been an honor to share this brief scam baiting adventure with you. In sincerity and on behalf of Rob, Rob McClendon.